Hello there. This brief presentation will look at meteorite findings here on Earth. In order to do this, we will look at Microsoft Business Intelligence tools with a focus on Power BI. Power Query gives us the ability to refine, combine and cleanse our data. So, for example, when we look at the type of meteorite here, we see that we have a whole bunch of different meteorite types here. Mainly, they are simply on one column, for like iron, for example. But then we see we have some examples where iron actually has a subcategory attached to it. What we want to do is enrich our data so that we actually have the subcategory available to us as well. So to do that, quite simply we right click on this column and we have the option to split the column here by delimiter. When we press this option, we can see that there is ability to split by comma and we're going to choose that. And what you see here is we now have a second column. When we examine the first column and go back to iron, we see we only have two types now, iron and then iron with a question mark. But what we have here is the ability to see the subcategories that were associated with iron as well. So that may also be useful. When we look at the year of the original meteor finding column, we can see straight away that this data has got nulls. To remove the nulls, we right click on one of the cells and that will be used as one of the criteria for filtering the data. So by choosing does not equal, we can see that we now have got rid of the nulls. They're no longer present. We assume that nulls in the date field are incorrect data types. You can see here that the year 1822, this particular date is in a different format to the others. The year appears at the beginning, whereas in the others it appears in the middle. So let's change this column so that everything is in the same format. So to do that, we select the column and choose date and time. What we see here now is that the year 1822 is in the middle like the other types. So what we can do is start to filter this column as well. So to do that, we can use date time filters and then what we could do is take dates after a certain value. So what we want to do is take dates that appeared after the year 1900. Some of this data we can see is fairly old and we're not sure of its accuracy. So let's take all meteorite findings that appear after the year 1901. So what we do now is apply and close this and when we go back to Excel we will see we have another sheet. And this sheet is the result of our Power Query. So let's rename it to Meteor Findings. And what we'd like to do now is add this data to our Power Pivot model. Once the data is in Power Pivot, we can do some interesting things with it. It will also be accessible to Power View, so it serves as the basis for our future modeling and display of data. So what we have here is we can create small pieces of DAX that will allow us to work out the size of each meteor. So here we put in a logarithm in order to smooth the data out and what it does is it looks at the size of the meteorite and then classifies it. This is just a very simple way of bucketing the data 
so we can do further analysis if we require. We've also done some work here around the decade. So for example, we could do some comparisons uh, between the beginning of the 20th century and the beginning of the 21st, for example. We've also added in some measures here. So for example, very simple piece of DAX here, which tells us the number of meteorites. This will be filtered by the power view when we actually create the visualization and interact with it. So to do that, what we can do is go back to Excel and we set up to insert a power view, you go to insert, then power view. Here's one we did earlier. So when we click on it, all I've done is select a number of criteria. I've selected latitude and longitude, the mass, which is the size of the meteorites, the place, which becomes our location, and the type of meteorite. I've done some analysis here and some filtering. So I very basically put in whether the meteorite is fell and then was found that way or whether someone just came across it and did some investigation and found it to be a meteorite. When we do this, we get a number of available data visualization options. So here I happen to have used a map What's nice about this is we can see the types of data and the types of meteorite which are being displayed in this data visualization. We can also brush the data. It's a form of filtering and basically what it does is it uses highlighting and color to emphasize some data points over others. We could also put some of these visualizations together. So here I've copied the map and I've done some filtering. And for the sake of simplicity, I've selected two different types of meteorite, angrite and albright. And what we have here is a very small table, which gives us more detail about the visualization. If we wanted, we could make the text size a bit smaller. Then it all fits more nicely on the page. We could also change the font type as well. But what we see here is a pattern. So for some reason, the amount of meteorite mass increased in 2006. And we might think that's a problem with the data. But what we could do is use this motion chart here. Now we do use motion all the time in order to identify the world around us when we are looking at anything really. Motion is a very basic building block of the visual system. So when we visualize data, motion can help us to find patterns in the data. So if we click on red, we can see here that we are brushing the data. And very little of this meteorite was found until 2006. When we click on it, we can get a tool tip which tells us that this particular type is all bright. So what we can do is we can actually use this and upload it to Office 365. And this is what I've done here. So we have our worksheet uploaded into Office 365. When we open the worksheet, it appears very, very similar to what we see in the Excel spreadsheet. We can still conduct our analysis, but it allows us to share the information. So we could share with other people if you wanted to. We could change this visualization and choose some different types of meteorite. So in order to summarize, uh, what we have done is taken some data Use Power Query in order to gather the data together and then filter and cleanse it. Once we've used Power Query, we've then put the data into Power Pivot by adding it to the data model. And then we have created some small visualizations which allow us to analyze the data further and make it accessible to people both in Excel and also via a browser.